So the Lord's been putting some things on my heart this week. There's been some real uh, revelation coming towards me that's just caused me to to come uh, to life and uh, and more fervency for the things of God. And I'm gonna I'm gonna share uh, share with you and some things that I'm going through in in hopes that I might encourage you because I think that the harvest and, and things are going to grow. And uh, God's calling us all into the, into the harvest field, so to speak. And I want you to be encouraged, not discouraged, but encouraged. All right. I've been having fun. I want you guys to share in some of my fun. Okay. All right. Is that all right? You may not think so before I'm done here, but right now, yeah. Okay. All right. All right, well, see, this is um, Galatians 5. This jumped out at me this week, and um, it says in verse 1, it says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. Who's ready to stand in the freedom that Christ has made available to you, right? Mm -hmm. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. And, uh, and so we need to be freedom fighters, right? And um, praise the Lord. And that's what we're about here. And we're going to try to make an impact on the country too. I mean, all of us together, the ch corporate church, can make a, an impact. How many believe that? Yes. If we would come together, and, and that's what's happening. Praise the Lord. Another thing that, um, that started uh, burning in my spirit this week is in the book of 1 Corinthians, uh, chapter 1, verse 18. Let's see if I can find this here. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 1, 18. It says, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it's the power of God. Hallelujah. And we don't want to get too far away from the preaching of the cross. We've got to stay right there. And I want to build on this. And, um, and there's a revelation. Last week we were touching on this. I want to build on last week and help to prepare the way for next week's message with Mary Ellen. And she's going to be teaching uh, you know, about the, the season of, of, the, of Hanukkah too. You know, that's the season of lights, the festival of lights. Jesus was the light of the world, right? I mean, I believe that's a prophetic picture pointing to, to us. He says, you are the lights of the world, right? Anybody who follows after him will not be in darkness, right? But shall have the light of life. And I'm hoping that there's going to be something here that will just, just cause our lights uh, to, um, to grow. And I'm telling you what, when you get a revelation of the cross... And, and the motive of the Lord, uh, it'll, it'll put a fire in your, in your heart that won't go out. And um, we just need to, we need to keep that, that revelation of the cross. And, and something the Lord uh, brought out to me last week, and I, I quoted this, John 14, 18, he said something that just jumped out at me. He says, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. I will not leave you as an orphan. You can say it that way. Other translations say orphan. He will come to us. And when you start to see the Lord's passion and his love, his great love uh, for us, that it, just, it didn't just end at the cross. It, it goes beyond the cross. How many know what I'm saying? And he made a way for you to, to rise from the dead, to be made alive by the power of his resurrection. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And uh, he's made a way for us to live as sons of God. We don't have to live as orphans. Isn't that something? And there's a real revelation here. Um, backing up a few verses to verse 12, our Lord said, Verily, verily, John 14, 12, classic verse. Verily, verily, I say to you, he that believes on me, the works that I do, he shall do also. And greater works than these shall he do because I go to my father. And then he said something, it's just amazing. He says, whatever you ask in my name, that will I do that the father may be glorified in the son. 
That's love. That's the love of God. And um, how many want to pay that price and be that vessel through, through which Jesus can, can, can glorify the Father and touch lives? What do you think? He will do that. How many want to make a way for the Lord to do that in your life? To bring you into everything that he paid the price for on the cross. You gotta, you, and this is a challenging message, but this is where the rubber meets the road. This is the real message of the cross. I mean, the Lord, there was something uh, that motivated our Lord to go to the cross. That in, empowered him to endure the cross. And, and the guys have been singing it in, in our worship service. is the same power that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you and you and you, all of us, right? Amen. Hallelujah. And, uh, and that same power can be realized. And it's realized by getting a revelation of the love of the Father. And, and that's just uh, the truth. And, um, and so what we're talking about today is more than just words. Uh, these are living words. These are things that you can experience, that Jesus paid the price for you to experience. And... Um, Hallelujah. It can bring you into healing, freedom, you know, favor, everything that you need to carry out your destiny. And Jesus wants to do it. He wants to come to you. Are you just willing to believe him? We are. Hallelujah. We are seeing some things happen. And so to have this miraculous revelation, this light, this uh, revelation of his glory, um, it helps to understand something, and this is something that I've been learning, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Flesh and blood. And uh, this is a big statement. We need to realize, I mean, our flesh can get carried away and try to, try to help God out if we're not careful, right? And get off into dead works. Easy, it's easier than you, than you may realize. And, and there's, there's a real revelation I want to bring out here, but... Uh, we just need to remember that he did bear our sins on the cross, right? Uh, on, on, on his body, you know, with his stripes, we were made whole, right? We were healed, and he bore our sins on the cross. And so, therefore, we are now dead to sin, but alive unto God, aren't we? Amen. I know we know these things, but I'm going somewhere with this. There's a real revelation here. And so, by his stripes, we are made whole. And, uh, and this is something the Lord's been having me operate in for a while. And this is in the book of Romans, chapter 6. And I just want to share it with you. And there's power here. How you see yourself is more powerful than you may realize. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's power in, in, in your ability to believe that you are the righteousness of God. We were talking about that last week, right? That our true destiny is in Jesus. Our lives are dead. Our, our, the lives we now live, right? You know, are supposed to be by the faith of the Son of God who, who died for us and gave himself for us, right? The life we live in the flesh. And, and so there's a revelation I'm going to try to bring out here today. Romans chapter 6, verse 11, it says, Likewise, reckon yourselves also to be dead indeed unto sin. Just... Reason that you are dead unto sin. This old, this old body that is, right? But alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. And there's power in the reckoning. In the reasoning. In the believing. How many believe that? Amen. There really is. There really is. And it's a real key to having healing and breakthrough. Yeah. And... Uh, and as we begin to believe this, the same power that empowered our Lord to be crucified, realize he, had to, he was empowered by the Holy Spirit to endure the cross and to be raised from the dead as well. How many believe that? that that's what the scriptures reveal. And, and you can see and experience that same resurrection power in your life. You can be raised to life. Hallelujah. You can live from that realm. Hallelujah. And uh, praise the Lord. Okay, so let's just build on this. Verse 12. Uh, Romans um, chapter 6, verse 12. It says, Let not sin, 
therefore reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in the lust thereof. I know our fleshes don't want to hear this message, but, but if you're wrestling with something, you need to, you need to fight with, the, with the, the power that has overcome the enemy. How many believe that? Eventually, if you try to do it in and of yourself even, you're going to, you're going to wear out after a while. You might have a little bit of strength, but the enemy he has a way of coming at you when you're weak, doesn't he? Yeah, okay. And so how do we do this? The answer is, is, is begin to be seen in verse 13. It says, um, Neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Can we do that just by simply believing that we are dead and we now live unto God and just by yielding ourselves to the Lord, could that happen? I'm telling you what, there's power there. That's what uh, the Apostle Paul was, was um, all over this in different places in Scripture. He said to the Corinthians, I don't want to know anything among you Corinthians except Jesus Christ and Him crucified, right? So that your faith won't be in the wisdom of men, but in the demonstration of the Spirit with power. I'm paraphrasing there, but... And it comes from the power of the resurrection of the Lord. And He operated in this. And not only did He operate in this, but so many in the, in the first century church operated in what we're talking about today. And so it goes on to say... For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you're not under the law, but you're under grace. Aren't you glad for that one? Yeah. Okay. And so, is what I'm talking about a hard thing to do? What do you think? No, we can do it because he's doing it, right? Just let Jesus come to you. Let him, just ask him. And he'll do whatever you ask. You know, as long as it's in line with the scriptures, of course, that the Father would be, <laughs> don't ask after your own fleshly lusts, you know. <laughs> it's not going to work out that way. Uh, he'll deal with you in another way, but, <laughs> but ask. And, and so we just have to learn how to yield our bodies to, uh, to the righteousness of the Lord. And that's what I try to, to do when I pray for people. I just see, because I know the kingdom of God's at hand, right? It says you don't have to call him in Romans chapter um, 10. You don't have to call Christ down. You don't have to call him up. Why? Because the word of God is near us in our heart and in our mouth. And we can believe with our heart unto righteousness. And we can speak the word and, and salvation is made, right? Yes. And we've been talking about that a little bit. It doesn't happen just because you say the word of God, but because you believe the word of God. And you start stepping into real faith. And that's where the revelation of righteousness is made, manifest, it's imparted to us as we live by faith, as we act on the word. And when you see Jesus show up, he makes a way. You know, he starts making a way for all of your needs to be met from the realm of his glory, his riches and glory. I mean, how many believe that his favor has a way of changing circumstances here in the realm of the earth for you. Amen. And where it looks like it's hopeless, he makes a way where there is no way. Amen. And we have to make a way for the Lord to work that out in our life. And we have to just ask and believe and be willing to be, like Genevieve was saying, a real disciple. Mm -hmm. I mean, just let the Lord be the Lord in your life. We've asked him to save us and be our Lord, but how many are allowing him to be the Lord of your life? Anybody know what I'm talking about? And just let the chips fall where they fall, you know, and just let God be God in your life, and you'll start to see this resurrection power that I'm talking about. But you're going to go through some stuff in the process. You're going to have to get scrappy and, and be willing just to hang on to the Word no matter what you do and keep your, your mouth in line with what the Word says. Is that Okay. Hallelujah. You'll see what I'm talking about. We'll get into that a little later here. I don't want to get into that yet. But uh, So just yield your body to the Lord. That's what I do. I, I say I just yield this knee to your righteousness. This lady that, D, she's not here. She got healed. 
by just yielding her knee to the righteousness and that pain left her body. And it could be that for anything. How many believe that? That's the word of God, right? Yeah. When Jesus starts showing up, it just starts to operate. The kingdom starts manifesting. But we've got to know who we are. We, we are dead, but we are alive unto God by his righteousness. And, and just believe in that, realizing that it changes everything. It makes a way for the Holy Spirit, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead, to quicken you. Even your mortal bodies can be quickened by the life of Jesus. Isn't that something? That really is. It, it is. And so let's just build on this a little bit more. And, um, and I want to I tap in onto that, that statement that I said, flesh and blood does not inherit the kingdom of God. And, uh, and Paul said that to some of the believers in Scripture because some of them apparently were living somehow as if their flesh was going to inherit the kingdom of God. How many believe that we could fall into that as well sometimes? You know, this is the stuff the Lord's dealing with me on. And, and I'm a work in progress too, but uh, if, if, we, if we're not careful, we can get caught up into things and waste time on things that will never touch heaven. And that's just the truth. So let's look at this. 1 Corinthians 15. And um, here's where that verse is. It says in verse 50, uh, Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither does corruption inherit incorruption. And this is a big deal. It really is. And so it's not your present body that enters into the kingdom. It's not the old you that God's after. It's, it's the new creation. It's who you really are in Christ, right, that he's after. There needs to be that exchange of garments, right? We need to, we need to put on Christ, right? Put on the robes of righteousness. It's revealed in Isaiah 61, and it comes through the preaching of the word of God. Praise the Lord. And so it's not the glory of the earthly uh, those things that we do apart from faith that's going to go with us into heaven, but it's only the glory of the sun that goes in. That's kind of interesting, huh? A lot of, a lot of things are, we're just waste. I'm not saying you, don't get mad at me. Well, I'm just, look, I've wasted a lot of time, you know? <laughs> and so, and I'm telling you what, the glory of the Lord, we're talking about becoming those lights, is a whole lot more than the halo that you see on those paintings that some of the artists paint. I mean, it is powerful. Mm -hmm. it's, what the, it's what the disciples saw in Jesus, okay? It was the expression of the heart of the Father in action. Oh, man. And when you start to catch the revelation of what Jesus says, I will not leave you comfortless. I'll come to you. It, it'll put, uh, put it in your heart. Yes, Lord, come. Use me. You know, I'll be that living sacrifice. Aren't, Aren't we the body of Christ here in the realm of the earth? He's the head, and where is he? He's in heaven. But we've got to make a way for the Lord to, to, to come and to do those things that only he can do that he's already done through our life, right? We're to be the body of Christ here in the realm of the earth. And we are. We're stepping into this. All right. Praise the Lord. This message is not for the faint of heart, I'll tell you right now, all right? Okay. Hallelujah. And so uh, this is why I believe the Lord gave us the scriptures. He gave us the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, so that we can enter into heaven, so that we can experience the glory and be changed, and, and so we can experience all the things that he did for us on the cross. How many want to experience everything? We all do, right? This is how our healing comes, how we follow after Jesus. It's after his example in scripture. And... Um, and so let's just look at this a little bit more here. It says, the word was made flesh in John 1.14. The word was made flesh. I mean, every step our Lord took, he took it with all of us in mind, right? He was a living sacrifice. It was a love of the heart, right out of the heart of the Father for you and for me. And he came and paid that price for us. I mean, this is, as you start to see this, it'll... It'll create a fire 
uh, in your heart, you know, uh, that will never go out. The love of God will turn, is like a fire that burns in your heart. And you'll want to go out and just be that sacrifice so that he can continue to do those things through you and touch others as well, right? Hallelujah. Oh, yeah, he'll, he'll turn you into a burning one. How many want to become a burning one for the Lord? Amen. Yeah. I mean, there, when you can cat, you can get so caught up into this that it just, I mean, it, things just happen. And when you start walking in the room and, I mean, people are going to know, right? When you speak like Gina was, she prayed a little prayer and boom, there was, there was a manifestation, right? Favor, right? For your, made a way for your son because I believe you prayed. Doesn't it say the fervent prayer? Fervent prayer. Hear that word fervent? And that's a fervency, a love, right? Of a righteous man or a woman. Avails much, right? That's the truth. So the word was made flesh, dwelt, tabernacled among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. That's what he was full of. Grace and truth. Isn't that something? Amen. And I'm telling you, when, uh, when the revelation of truth comes to you up here in the realm of your soul, your mind, it imparts, it comes with grace to walk it out, to live it out. And we just need to believe that Jesus will come to us through truth. If we'll continue in him, if we'll be his disciples, we'll see the truth that makes us free. We don't have to live in bondages. We can walk out of these things. And so I'm just being honest with you. You know, I got stuff I'm dealing with and I'm fighting against. And you know what? Jeez, and, and the Lord is setting me free. Has anybody been set free from something in here? We're all a work in progress. Every one of us. We all got stuff, you know, in our past. But thank God he paid the price for all of us. He really did. And so... Um, it's the glory that we behold the truth that imparts the grace that we, that we need to live by faith in the here and the now. And, and again, it's his resurrection power. It comes through the cross. 2 Corinthians 3.18 reveals that, that the glory transforms us into the same image. It's only the glory that we live in and walk out uh, that goes on with us in the heaven. That's just the truth. Everything else will be dissolved. Everything else will be dissolved. Isn't that something? It kind of changes your perspective when you start to, to realize this. And so if our testimony is not from the realm of faith, then where is it from? If Jesus was raised from the dead, which he is, he was and is, and we're not living from this position, I'm not trying to put any condemnation on anybody. I'm just, I'm looking in my own mirror then where are we living from? And if our witness is void of his glory, and if we're, if we're not raised, then how can our witness be of faith? You guys see the paradox here? I mean, there's only one way in to this, and that's through faith, it's through Jesus. And when we go on to heaven, if we stay in this, in this mode, how many believe that there's people in the church that are in this mode? You know, if we just live like that, what's going to go on with us when we pass? I'm not saying you won't go to heaven, but you, you know what I'm saying? We've got to be part of something. We've got to be doing something for the kingdom, right? Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. And so it's only the life of the Son of God that, that, that changes us that goes on in the heavenly realm. His nature, His holiness, His purity, and uh, His character, you know, uh, everything else that everything that pertains to life and godliness will go with us, but everything else won't. And that's just the truth. So, so how can we increase in this life? Didn't Jesus say, "I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly"? How can we uh, increase in this life so the life we're now living is not in vain? The life that we're thinking is not in vain. We must be raised from the dead, right? We've got to be quick and we must be restored in the life of Jesus. Hallelujah. Is this okay with you guys? 
All right, so let's go back to 1 Corinthians 15, and I'm going to kind of dig into this a little bit. And um, picking up in verse 42. Hallelujah. I tell you. This message, you know, these things are, are things that we just learn along the way, you know, and the Lord makes a way for you to come into these understandings. And, and uh, I don't want anybody to go through it the hard way. You know, you can go in through understanding. And so it says here, So also is a resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption and is raised in incorruption. It's sown in dishonor, it's raised in glory, right? It's sown in weakness, it's raised in power. Anybody need some power? Yeah. It's sown in natural body, it's raised in spiritual body, right? There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul, but the last man, Adam, was made a quickening spirit. Wow, these words have quickening power. You know, is, isn't that something? They are spirit and life. It's the flesh profits nothing. Our Lord said that in John 6, 63. It's the spirit that quickens. The words that he spoke, they are spirit and they are life, right? And so see the word as the seed, but it, see it as a spiritual seed. It's a, and that's who our Lord is. And there's a spiritual body. Doesn't it say when we pass on that we have a house made not with hands, eternal in the heavens? That's what it says in, in Scripture there. And so this is how we are starting to see uh, these things happen in the ministry, uh, how the things are increasing and growing by, by sowing, you know, what God gives us to do, our lives into it, and he makes a way for it to, to be raised up. And so many times in starting churches, uh, we, we saw them, and it looks like they've died. It looks like it failed. It looks like we're a ministry. You know, we, we've done this. We planted the seed. Or might, maybe it's for your business, or uh, it just doesn't matter. It's the way of the kingdom. You've got to sow it in. Sow your life. Give whatever it is he's telling you to do. And then don't be surprised if it dies. And, and unless, unless a seed falls in the ground and dies, how can it be raised up? But when it's raised up, there's juice on it. It's the Holy Spirit's all over it. It's a different kind of a deal. It changes everything. How many know what I'm talking about? And so I've, I've seen this over and over. And this is how we, we tap into our, 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 our purpose in our lives. We have to, to realize everywhere we go, we're a living sacrifice. We're giving, we're sowing. And then after a season of time, things pop up um, by his power. Hallelujah. It's through faith we understand these things. And so I hope this is encouraging you. So, some, so many people, they've lost their dreams because it didn't look like it worked out because they've, they, they tried it or they've given their life over. And, and it just, but don't be surprised if, if something doesn't start to rise up here in some of your lives, you know, in the days ahead. Does that make sense? Does that encourage you a little bit? Don't give up on your dreams, right, on the promises of God. Because they're all, yes and amen, they're all sure to the end, to the seed. That's what it says in Romans 4, 17, I believe. All the promises of God are sure to the end, to all the seed. And there's a lot of promises that, that are in the Bible Praise the Lord. And so we need to see ourselves as a seed. And these are kingdom principles that will operate in your life. That the, the church fathers in scripture, they operated in this. I'll show you before we're through here. And so the body of Christ is spiritual. And when you get the revelation, when you get into the glory, it gets, it gets into you. Isn't that the truth? There's just something of Jesus just... just like I was saying, these verses just started burning in my spirit this week. They change you. Hallelujah. Anybody feeling changed yet? Amen. Yeah? Okay. When you behold it, when you behold the seed, Jesus, you know, something's, something happens. Uh, you know, it's that which you are able to behold, you know. 
that just starts getting all over you, that transforms you, heals you, sets you free, you know, it makes a difference. We need to contend for the revelation of our faith. How many believe that? It talks about this in, in, in Scripture. I think Peter talks about this, that we need to gird up the loins of our, of our mind and contend for the faith that comes at the revelation of Jesus. And, and that's, I don't know exactly where that is in Scripture, but we need to gird up the loins of our mind. That's kind of interesting. Okay, all right. Hope I'm blessing you guys here. So verse 46, we're still in, um, where are we? 1 Corinthians 15. We're going to just kind of go down a few more verses here. It says, How be it that which was not first is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward that which is spiritual. And uh, isn't that something? These are the ways of the kingdom. And a lot of people, they get disenchanted with the church because the society that we live in is like, Instant. We want everything now, right? We want our food now and everything. We want it now, right? And, and, and there's a process in the kingdom. A lot of people become disenchanted with the gospel because of a number of factors. But that's part of it right there. They don't make a way for that seed to grow and to manifest. And, and so it says the first man is of the earth, earthly. And the second man is a Lord from heaven. As is the earth, earthly, such are they also that are earthly. That's just the way I used to be. And it's just the truth. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. How many believe that's, that should be the way it is in our life too, right? And as we have borne the image of the earthly, it says we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. How many want to... How many want to bear the image of the Son of God? Praise the Lord. Now I say this, brethren, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither does corruption inherit incorruption. Aren't you glad? Amen. There's an exchange in heaven, you know? Hallelujah. So I'm telling you what, we can all experience this. If you're not already, you can. You can go after these things. Well, it looks like those kids are having a great time in there, huh? So, so, well, how many want to go in there? Yeah. And so, <laughs> somebody's having a lot of fun. Uh, so I want to encourage you today. You guys, have, I'm building a foundation here to prepare you for what's coming here in this message, all right? How many are encouraged already? Amen. How many believe these, these are eternal truths? Okay then let me encourage you, don't be discouraged by what I'm about to say next, okay? Uh, because uh, the reason why we see so little of what I'm talking about, I'm, I'm not saying we don't see it, but it's because so many, when they try to step into the kingdom and live by faith, they, they get so much opposition that they scatter, they, they depart, they, they, they run. Anybody know what that, don't raise your hand, but anybody know what that's like? I know what that's like, you know. And the guy that mentored me, that, that ordained me, says a lot of pastors, full gospel pastors don't, that really go after, they don't make it because of the persecution. And a lot of churches don't make it full gospel churches because of the persecution, because for whatever reason, they're, they're, they're not making a way for the Lord to, to come to them, to do those things that, that he said he would do, right? That to, to make a way for the Father to be glorified in the Son. We don't even have to do it. We just need to believe. Doesn't matter what it is. But you're going to go through some stuff to enter into what I'm talking about. And I don't want to water down the gospel. You know, the t I was telling you how we started having multiplication in our, in our, in our television ministry. It started with a seed. It started with... You know, just start making videos, and then we got on the public access, and then we stepped in, and we started paying for some different channels, and then we got on to one network, and then another network, and, and then it just starts to grow and multiply, because that's the way it happens. But you're going to be challenged to the hill to see that happen. And there's going to be some things in you that need to be transformed to, to, 
to make a way for that to happen. How many know what I'm talking about? And so it's challenging. And, uh, and it looks like there's just no way that you can do these things. And it's the truth. You can't. But through him, you know, the things, the things that he's showing you in the spirit, you can do because he's doing it through you. He wants to bring you into every promise, every, every thought that God has for you from the beginning. But who's just bold enough and just willing to be uh, sold out enough to believe him over, over what everything else is telling us? And I'm telling you, our God is right. Our, he's right here. We're not alone. He's here. He's with every one of us. So this is why we don't see a lot of what I'm talking about is because of persecution. Anybody ever hear of, of John G. Lake? John G. Lake. How many have heard of John G. Lake in here? He is from uh, around the, t the turn of the century, the 1900s. He started coming into... He was, uh, he was going to be a doctor, and anyways, he went to Azusa Street. He went on into missionary work, and he didn't become a doctor. He became this man of God that transformed lives. And, I mean, he went over to Africa, and um, he had such a revelation of what we're talking about that the bubonic plague broke out over there in, in Africa, and it didn't get him because he was living from his true identity. He knew that the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus set him free from the laws of sin and death. And it was medically, he was medically examined whenever they put that, that plague on his hands under a microscope, it died instantly in his hands because of the righteousness of Christ that was emanating from his, his life. He's the guy, anybody ever hear of the healing rooms? They're all around the nation, around the world. Well, he started the healing rooms in Washington. And, uh, I mean, hospitals were cleared out. There's medical documented, you know, uh, healings and things that have happened through his ministry. And because he was tapping into what we're talking about, he had a real revelation. You should get his book if you haven't got his book uh, through uh, Robert's Laertens Ministry. And it's got all his, all of his, his, his sermons are compiled in one volume. It's, it's a good study. I chew on it every so often. I go back into them and I chew on those messages. And there's power in those messages. But I heard another minister one time in, uh, on television, who I'm fond of, he, he had the opportunity to, to uh, interview John G. Lake's daughter. And this was his daughter, you know, uh, and he was from the 1800s. And she, he says, what's a notable thing that you would say that describes your, your father the most? And he said, and here's what she said. And I think it's kind of an honor to him. He was a man of persecution. Man of persecution. And uh, I'll explain why I'm saying that. And um, isn't that something? Persecution. I mean, he was... He was healing people, displacing the enemy, and there was something coming against him seemingly everywhere he went. He was a man of persecution. How many believe our Lord was a man of persecution? How many believe in the world you're going to have it too? That's what he said, but be of good cheer because I've overcome the world, right? And a lot of people, they back off because of what I'm talking about. And uh, we can't whitewash things. We uh, we got to speak the truth, and um, and so a lot of people are scattered because of persecution. But I believe it's time to rise up, to make a stand, and to make a difference in this area in our lives. And how about the country? How many believe that we can do things, right? All right, praise the Lord. It's time to shine, right? To become those lights. Amen. Just a little bit of Jesus can blow the devil up again, right? Yeah, I'm telling you, it's the truth. And so if you're not starting to see things as they should be, whatever you do, don't back off, don't scatter. Be, just become a living sacrifice, right? That God can use to release his glory through and just to obliterate the devil. He will come. He will come. And you really can make a difference. I want to encourage you. And the more of us coming together for his purpose, 
the more, you know, the more uh, impact we can make in lives around us. Isn't that just the truth? And so I really want to encourage you. We're, God's got, how many believe every church that God's got a vision for that church? We should all be part of something. We should all have a faith project. We should all be, you know, doing what he's called us individually and corporately too. I believe that. And if you don't have one, well, pray about it. You know, get a faith project, you know. You know, join in with what we're doing around here too and just see if you don't see some, some fruit. And we're starting to see more and more fruit. And so, so please hear this. Persecution will come. I'm not trying to prophesy anything. I'm just speaking the truth. After the baptism of the Holy Spirit, after the power, after the dunamis power starts to operate in your life, you know what? It seems like there's always something there trying to hinder, trying to discourage you. How many know what I'm talking about? Well, I think everybody knows that. It's just there, but if we'll just press through, you can have real breakthrough. Just hang on to the word, even if he has to drag you through the valley of the shadow of death. You know what? The Lord can, he'll bring you through. How many believe that? Just hang on to the word, spirit, soul, and body. Make it your only confession, and you'll start to see it. Just keep going. That's how I go. It just, I can't tell you the... I don't tell people the stuff that happens behind the scenes, but there's a lot of stuff trying to stop, trying to stop me just from doing what we're doing. And sometimes it looks like, oh, it's over, man. It, <laughs> the enemy makes you... I, but you know what? You just go to the cross, right? And you thank him. And, and, and something happens in the nick of time, and Jesus shows up, and that life of Jesus manifests and brings a breakthrough. I can't tell you how many times I've, I've, I've stepped out where it looked like I was a goner and Jesus showed up and I have never seen him not show up so far. And I've been doing this for several years now. Not once. He always shows up. Even if, I'm, if I screw up and I get in the right place, he'll show up. Isn't that something? Yeah. So let's, let's look at this. I want to kind of back this up with the word. Uh, turn with me to Acts chapter 5. And um, I'm telling you when, you, when you were born again, you were born to be overcomers. You, there's something of a warrior inside of every one of you. There's something of Christ that will make you more than a conqueror, that will cause you to triumph everywhere you go. Christ will cause you if you'll let him come to you and bring you through. How many believe that? And if you're going through some stuff, don't be discouraged. Be encouraged. I know it doesn't make sense, but it's, this is biblical what I'm saying. Okay, I'll get into that in a minute. But here it says, Acts 5.12, By the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people, and they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. So it wasn't just the, the apostles, but everybody was, they were in one, they were, there was a unity, unity thing going on there to advance the kingdom, wasn't there? People were, the church was the church. We weren't just some group of people that came and listened to a pastor, but we are actually part of the, of a, the living body of Christ going out and making an impact in lives. In the marketplace, everywhere we go, Right? They were the church, and that's what we are. We're to be the church. And it says, The rest durst no man join himself to them, but the people magnified them. And, and I want to say that we don't do anything that we might be magnified, but we're trying to magnify the name of the Lord, right? And it says, Believers were added, more added to the Lord, multitudes, both of men and women, insomuch that they brought forth the sick into the streets, and lay them on beds and couches that at the least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. Oh man, isn't that something there? I mean, he was, he really got into the place where it was Christ in him, right? There was something, there was a light shining through his life that caused his shadow to heal people. Isn't that something? Oh, that's a picture of what happens when you start bearing the image of the sun. 
That's all I can say. I mean, the, the power of the glory of the Lord is, is more, there is so much more than what we, I think, have experienced yet. I think that there is a great restoration coming to the church. And we seem to see this, 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 uh, this incline, this acceleration, if you will, of persecution coming on this nation and, and Christians around the world. But what it's going to do, it's going to, it's going to cause the body of Christ to rise up in the fullness. It's going, to, it's going to awaken that giant inside of you, and you guys are going to become giant killers in, before it's all through. How many believe that? Okay, praise the Lord. You guys are in the right place, yeah. You've got to be a little scrappy to be in here. Okay, all right. And it says, there came also, on the verse 16, a multitude out of the cities round about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folks and them which were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed, every one. Every one of them were healed. How many would like to see that? We've been in some meetings. We've had some miracle services where everybody was healed. Everybody was set free. Not one person left that place the way they came in. We've, I can't say that's happened in every one, but I've seen some to his glory. I want to see more of that. Amen. Amen. Wow. But what happened afterwards? I mean, this is because of the power of the Lord's resurrection, because they received the baptism of the Spirit. And, and what happened? It says the high priest rose up, and uh, all they that were with them, which is the sect of the Sadducees, and they were filled with indignation. I'm telling you what, when we start stepping into what I'm saying, there's going to be some religious demonic forces just coming out of the woodworks in the days ahead. Believe me, it will happen. Um, and it says, they laid hands on the apostles and put them in the common prison. Wow. But God, they still paid the price. They got out of, what did they do in prison? They started singing in prison, right? God set them free, opened the doors, and right, angels came. And what did they do? They went out and, and just converted a whole bunch more people. I mean, it just didn't matter, you know, if everything looked like they, it was over. There was something inside of them that just wanted uh, to make a way for the Lord to do whatever he wanted to do. There's a great shaking that's coming on the earth, in the heavens and in the earth. And we need to get into this place that I'm talking about. How many believe that? It's coming. We see the prophetic... Uh, prophecies are being fulfilled before our eyes. I mean, the, the, this all pointing to the coming of the Lord. Before he comes, there's going to be this glorious church, you, that's going to rise up. How many believe that? All right. And, not, and the Lord knows just how to lead every one of you. Believe me, I didn't know how to do the things I'm doing. I had to be led. And just it just happens because you follow the Spirit. So... Praise the Lord. So everything you're going through, God can turn it around and, and, and the Father can get, glory, get the glory through the life of Jesus living through your life. Hope I'm encouraging people. A lot of people, they don't, they don't walk in the baptism of the Spirit. They don't believe in it. And they're missing out. Yeah. I'm telling you, everything that Jesus did, you know, going to the cross, it was by the power of the Holy Spirit that he endured the cross, the joy of the strength of the Lord. We need it to do what we're called to do. Not saying you have to have it, but a lot of people get tripped up over the over the new birth and, and the baptism. And uh, it's there in the scripture. Though I just want to just stop for a minute and just talk about that real quick. And how many have re have not received? Has anybody not received the baptism of the Spirit in here? I think everybody here has, huh? Okay. But so many people don't. They don't even believe in it. But if you look in Scripture, you'll see where Jesus, in the, in the book of John, I think, he came after he, raised, after he was risen from the dead, before he went into the heavenly realms, you know, to sit at the throne, it, it reveals that he breathed on his disciples. Anybody remember that? He says, you know, receive the promise of the Spirit. And, uh, and, but later on, you'll see in the book of Acts, 
that he, he appeared to them and he said, wait till you be endued with power from on high, right? Talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit so that you could be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem and even to the utter most parts of the earth. You know, we are to be witnesses and we need the power of the Holy Spirit to be these mighty witnesses. How many believe that? A lot of people miss out on that. I mean, when he breathed on them, there was, uh, you know, they received the Holy Spirit, but it was for regeneration. It was the new birth. But there's also the second work of the Spirit that can come on you. Sometimes you get it all at once when you get baptized, but sometimes it's a, it's a subsequent experience, and it's, it's revealed in Scripture. Uh, Titus 3.5 kind of brings out a little revelation on this. Let's look at Titus 3.5 for a minute. I just want to share that because maybe somebody listening or watching, you know, they, they, don't, they don't believe maybe in this Holy Spirit, but, I mean, I was born again. I was radically saved. But one day I heard this preacher on TV says, saying, call my, my prayer warrior and receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I said, what is he talking about? And so I want to find out. And he started giving scripture, so I called him. And man, I got the Holy Spirit baptism. I'm telling you, I got it powerfully. And I didn't receive tongues right away, but a few weeks later, all this stuff started coming out of me, and I was singing in the Spirit and all this stuff. I thought I was going crazy. And then I found out I was speaking in tongues. I was relieved. It was in the Bible. I mean, I'm telling you, it's true. And wow. Okay, Titus. Three, five. You got it, Gina, right there? What's it say there? It says, uh, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. So that's what we need. We need the washing of regeneration and the renewing in the Holy Ghost. And, and, uh, and so it kind of breaks it out there, doesn't it? Okay. All right. just wanted to touch on that a little bit. Okay. Praise the Lord. All right, let's, um, let's just continue. Can you handle a little bit more? Okay. Not being discouraged here? This persecution talk? How many would rather have the truth? And, yeah. And so I hope that this is encouraging. And, uh, and I tell you, I've experienced what I'm talking about. And I continue to experience this. You know, from the spiritual realm, you've got forces, you've got people. Executed. How many believe that? Far greater to have the kingdom and be persecuted than, than to not be persecuted. I'm glad that I've gone through the things that I've gone through. And I know that I've, the things that I've gone through are probably minuscule compared to what we see in Scripture, but we're all a work in progress. But... But there is something happening in this world, and it's time for the church to rise up in the resurrection power of the Lord and to become the church. How many is ready for that? Hallelujah. So whatever comes your way, don't back off, don't retreat. Don't enter into judgment. Don't grow bitter and cold, right? Why? Just become quickened by the power of the Holy Spirit. All right, I better... I better move on here a little bit. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So you guys are still here, so I guess I'm all right, huh? You're doing okay here? Okay. I think I need, to, um, I need to start closing here. Let me just close with this, all right? And, and again, the disciples, the apostles, they knew what I'm talking about. And let's close with what, something that Peter said in 2 Peter chapter 1. And we'll just close here. I want to thank you for listening to me today. And I pray that this just stirs you up. Uh, 2 Peter chapter 1. I'm going to read a few verses here. It says, Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us, through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And he goes on to say, Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God 
and of Jesus our Lord. How many believe that they endured some things to be able to, to come into that place to say what they said? Yeah. How many want to have that revelation, the multiplication of grace in your life? Amen. It comes by just saying, yes, Lord, you be my Lord, I'll follow you. Uh, and, and I ask you to do those things. Just stand on the word and ask and know that he will. All the promises of God are, are yes, right? He'll make good on every one of them in your life. But just be ready to, 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 to overcome some stuff too along the way. That's okay, right? Faith. You guys, are you guys all right with this here? You guys? All right. All right. That's a big deal. And it just goes on and kind of lays out, you know, that it's according to his power, his divine power, that he's given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. All right? It's through the knowledge of him that called us to glory and virtue. We're called into this realm of his glory. It says we're given exceeding great and precious promises that by these we might be partakers of the divine nature. Isn't that something? And then it goes on and it says be diligent and all these different things. Go read this on your own and, and you'll, just, you'll see that what I'm talking about here. The Lord's got it all set up for us. If we'll just follow this, there's a, like a road map right here. Yeah, to make a way for you to go. So I hope that uh, I blessed you today with that message and that you're ready to just go out and bring the kingdom to reveal Jesus. Who's ready to do that? Okay. If you get a little heat, you know, call me, call one of your friends, you know, your brothers or sisters, and we'll pray for you, we'll encourage you, and then we'll come together and make a way for the kingdom to advance. Hallelujah. Okay. So I'm going to close here. Um, Bob, you opened up today. I'm just going to say, say a quick prayer. And, and, uh, and if anybody wants some prayer too, but um, if you got something you're dealing with right now, let's just lift it up right now. Can we do that right now? Anybody got something? We all got something, right? I'll pray for people, maybe somebody watching too. Just yield it to the righteousness of the Lord. Reckon yourself, you know, dead, but alive unto God through his righteousness, right? So, Lord, we just thank you that we can come before you in the mighty name of Jesus. We just yield ourselves to you. We, we, we yield the circumstance to your righteousness, uh, whatever it is, or whether it's a healing thing, a financial thing, or a freedom thing that we need, Lord. We thank you, Lord that you are here. Holy Spirit, we thank you that you are establishing the, 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 the life of Jesus in our life right now. And so we thank you for your anointing that breaks down and breaks through all the problems of the enemy. Your anointing destroys the yoke, removes the burdens, and makes a way for us to choose life and to continue in Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that there is an army of uh, soldiers, spiritual army, rising up to, to just to bring the name of Jesus to the nations in the days ahead. I pray for your favor, uh, for, uh, for the heart of the people to have a catch the vision of your heart, Father God, your love for us and for others through us. I pray we all would just rise up into this and go out and be your voice, be your mouth, be your hands that touch and reach in the name of Jesus. We give you glory.